Welcome to the Walton Pi. Today I'm going to go through a practice problem that could very well show up on one of your calculus tests. Uh, today I'm going to be showing how to prove that there is exactly one solution to the expression 13 equals x cubed x squared plus 28x. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and sharing this uh, and my other videos with your friends because it really does help me to keep making these videos. Okay, so how would we prove that there's exactly one solution to this expression? Well, the first thing I would recommend doing is to try and get this where you have some function equals zero, because those are a lot easier. So that is going to be zero equals something. So we are going to move the 13 over to the other side, and we are going to get x cubed minus 9x squared plus 28x minus 13, and we are going to call this entire piece here our function f of x. So now what we have is now we have a function that we are going to try and show is equal to zero. So how might we be able to do that? Well, this is where we're going to have to use both things that we've learned recently and things we learned a little while ago and put them together. So how can we show that there is at least one solution? Well, the way that we show at least one solution, that is using the intermediate value theorem. So this is going to make us go back a little bit and think, but what does the intermediate value theorem say? Well, this says that we need a function to be continuous, and that's it. We only need continuity for the intermediate value theorem to work. So the question is, is f of x continuous? Well, yes. In this case, our function f of x is continuous. So our function f of x equals x cubed minus 9x squared plus 28x minus 13 is continuous. So this means that we can use the intermediate value theorem. So that's why we state this. So, so we can use the intermediate value theorem. All right, now that we have that, what does the intermediate value theorem tell us? That says if we can find a place where that function is negative and a place where that function is positive, so we have negative and a positive, then that means that somewhere in between it's going to have to cross the line at zero. So it has to equal something in between the two values. So that means if we can find somewhere where this function is positive and somewhere where this function is negative, then that means we will have proven that there is at least one solution. So what we're going to do is just look at some different values. So let's say we look at f of 0. That's an easy number to plug in. So f of 0 gives us 0 minus 0 plus 0 minus 13. That was a nice one. Now let's look for something that's positive. So maybe let's look at something like f of 10. Well, that's going to be 1,000 minus 900 plus 280 minus 13. Is this positive or negative? Well, this is 100, and this is 263. So this is 363, which is bigger than 0. Oh, 367, my bad. Come on. All right, 367, which is positive. We didn't actually have to sh find the exact number. We just had to prove that it was positive. So we have something positive, we have something negative, so that means that by the intermediate value theorem, there is at least one solution. Are we done? We've shown that there's at least one solution, but are we done? We're not, actually, because we need to prove that there is exactly one solution. All we've done is shown there is at least one solution. So that means there might be one solution, two solutions, three solutions, or four solutions, or more. We just have to now show that there's exactly one solution. So how might we do that? Well, let's look at a picture. Let's try and visualize what this is representing. So we know that somewhere between 0 and 10, we know that there's a place where it crosses the axis. But let's say, 
Let's imagine that somewhere else, maybe not even in that region, but somewhere else there's another place where it crosses. So somehow our function is doing something like that. We don't know what it looks like, but it's doing something. What would happen if we have a solution here and a solution here? Well, this is the mean value theorem. Because the mean value theorem says that if you connect these two points, so there we go, we've connected them, the slope of the line that connects them has to be equal to the slope of the function somewhere. But the slope of the line connecting those, that's zero. So that means that somewhere the derivative of our function has to be zero. That's how we're going to approach this problem. So let's go and look to see how might we be able to do that. So the next step is we're going to say no more than one solution. That's, that's our next goal. So no more than one solution. And this is going to be done using the mean value theorem. Okay. So here's how we're going to go and do that. We are going to say f of x is continuous everywhere. and is differentiable everywhere. Why do we need to stay, say this? Well, that's because the mean value theorem requires that our function be continuous and differentiable on the interval we're looking at. But since we don't have a specific interval we're looking at, if we just say everywhere, because in this case the function is continuous everywhere, that's going to be enough for us to be able to use the mean value theorem on this problem. So now we're going to look at this. Now this is a little bit tricky wording here. So we're going to say if there are two or more solutions, to f of x equaling 0, then by the mean value theorem, there is a C where F prime of C is equal to B minus F of B minus F of A, but both of those are zero, divided by B minus A, so that's just equal to zero. Okay? You could use the mean value theorem or you could also use Rolle's theorem. Both of these would work. So either Rolle's theorem or the mean value theorem work in this case. Mean value theorem is just easier because that's the more general form. But what we're doing is we're saying if there are two or more solutions, then by the mean value theorem there has to be somewhere where the derivative is zero. But now what we're going to do is now we're going to get a contradiction. So, but we're, now we're going to say, but what is f prime of c? Well, taking the derivative, we're going to get 3x squared minus 18x plus 28. Oof. Let's fix that. Okay. Plus 28. We need to show that that is never 0. Because if we can show it's never 0, then that means there aren't two or more solutions. But if we go through and try and solve this, what we can do is we can use the quadratic, uh, we can use the quadratic formula, or we could factor it. Let's actually try and factor this first. See if that makes it a little bit easier. So that's equal to three times x squared minus six x uh, plus. Ooh, it's not factor nice. Twenty-eight does not divide into 3. So look, yeah, we're going to look at the quadratic formula. Oh, whoops, all of these should be there. That should be x's. But if we look at the quadratic formula, x equals opposite b, so that's a plus 18, 
plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's an 18 squared, minus 4 times 3 times 28, all over 2 times 3. This has no solutions. Because if we actually figure out what's inside the square root, that's a negative number. And so because that's a negative number, that means that there is no real solution. This function is actually always above the x-axis. So it never actually is equal to zero. So that means that there can't be two or more solutions. So we would finish by saying that. So there cannot be two or more solutions. So how do we reconcile these two sides? On one side, the intermediate value theorem says that there's at least one solution. But then the mean value theorem side says there can't be more than two solutions. So the only option that's left is for there to be exactly one solution. So what we would say is we would say combining both of these pieces of information, so this side plus this side says so there is exactly one solution. And that is how we would go through and prove that there is exactly one solution to the function 13 equals x cubed 9x squared plus 28x. That is how we would go through and do this problem. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please consider liking and subscribing and share my videos with anyone else in your calculus class who is looking for helpful videos. And with all of that said and done, I hope you have a great rest of your day and good luck with all of your math.